Welcome back YouTube. This time uh, I will be making a tutorial for the people that want to do this for themselves. And uh, I'll give some a quick explanation here and there. And I hope you'll be doing this as soon as possible. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I might make another tutorial here where we will go into more detail into using more functions. But this is basically what, it, uh, what you need. All right, we're going to grab a picture here from NASA. You might uh, know this one uh, from my videos. And the first thing you notice in this image, it's absolutely horrible. And this is what they give you, this is our problem, and this is how we fix it. Now in Photoshop, you got this layer. Before we start, you always want to keep the original layer so you can check on yourself. Um, it's important to check on yourself. Nothing more to add there. Now let's go to Filter, keep that new layer selected, go to Blur, Field Blur. And this is highly suspicious, but it's always 2 pixel. Now you can see, see the difference? It's rendering live for you. Now it's absolutely horrible. We'll do one, you still see it's horrible. We go to 2 and it's perfect. This is what you want. Later on when we, when we will start using the sharpen tool, um, it will help the sharpen tool a lot. Now I'll give you a quick example I think. I haven't tested this out before I started doing this. And it starts to sharpen the, the image artifacts. That's not what you want, right? So let's blur this up again. And and now it's absolutely amazing just just the difference in picture. See? Boom! It it looks this is like the image it should be. Let's go to the next step before I bore you to death. Tutorials are not always that fun, I know, but it's highly what well, you know the reward is quite exciting and it's really cool. Alright, we got a layer here, got it selected. And in this image, you know, because normally I would throw in here, I'd go here, selective color, remove about 50% on the red. Well, we could do that right now. But this image is already looking really nice, I'd, I'd say just leave the colors as they are in this image. But for the sheer purpose of showing you, now go to image, adjustment, shadow and highlight. You don't have to do this uh, this much, I'll even, I even do 150% on regular occasions, but that's just me, offline. So now you'll be thinking, hey crazy, here's the thing, keep the, uh, keep the shadow here, look at it, and click on it. And it removes a lot of shadow. Now it will be a lot more clear in a second here. Alright. So you see that? Just click here in saturation. Now remember to keep this uh, monitor what is selected here. And on what layer you are. Now you might still be thinking you know it's crazy. Let's go to the upper layer. Levels. Press auto once. Bring it back down. Now you might be thinking there's something wrong with the color here. Well, you don't want to use too much level because you're kind of, I'm not saying exactly, but kind of um, reverting back to the uh, how the image was with shadows. Now, I just said kind of, so don't take that too seriously. Uh, I have to keep this video as simple as possible. Now we're getting back here. As you can see, the color, everything is really nice equalized there. Uh, do press all though, you know, always. Um, you just want to keep it simple for yourself. I bet you by the end of this video you'll be hunting anomalies in the thousands. <laughs> so you do want to keep it as simple as possible for yourself. Now this is uh, really, really uh, the steps I'm showing you here. They work on almost every single image. And that's what I like about this one. Um, make a new group here. A folder. One, two, three. Keep your left control pressed. So you can select whatever you want to do. And we'll grab that one as well, drop it in the group. Now this is really easy for you later on as well. Now it's easier for you to compare. Now as you can see, this area here looks a lot better. This area here has a lot more detail. You wouldn't be able to make anything out of it. And there's, there's no magic happening here. It's just showing what, or what there already was in the image. Never forget that. It's just making it easier for your eyes to, to, to see 
through all the rubbish that they've thrown in on this image. I mean, look at this quality. All this weird pixelation and stuff is going on here. And now you can see a lot easier. Now you really want to find some anomalies? That's just basically how it works. Now, because you don't have the program, you see this a lot. I use this program in my videos, not for reason for that. But let's use it without. Right click here. <coughs> Make a new one. You always want to keep your, your original layers if something goes wrong. Um, it's it's just a lot easier. You just want to return back and see uh, what, what 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 you were doing before, what the effects were doing, and and there's a ton of reasons why you should do that. But I must say, I am absolutely addicted in backups. <coughs> I have I'm an absolute backup junkie. Now right, <coughs> got the new layer selected. Filter, <coughs> sharpen, smart sharpen. This is exactly what I want. Now we'll go uh, with any setting here for the moment. And you can see and it has sharpened up. It's really easy, that's what I'm talking about. You can just go back and forward to see what's going on. Now you can see that sharpen tool mainly makes all the lines pop out. And that's exactly what you want. Now I'll make another quick example here. Don't follow me on this one. I'll grab here the normal sharpen tool, keep my mouse button pressed. And even if I overuse this tool, the sharpening, the lines are fine. And that's what you want to have. You want the lines to pop out, you want to analyze the lines. Now that was a quick demonstration now of the sharpening tool. We got a dodge tool here. Uh, it make, as you can see, you can equalize an area by color. Um, you can remove shadows with them. You can look literally underneath a rock, but because you're using shadow and highlights, I don't use that a lot. I would use it here, for example, a bit. Uh, as you can see, I made it a bit too strong. Uh, be cautious about this as well. Made an entire video where it was at 100%, so that's quite unfortunate. Always keep things at 50% if you want to adjust it. If you're just starting, I'd recommend for you to use 20%. But either way, 50% is fine as well. Uh, see what you like, everyone's different. And where were we? Alright, we've sharpened up the image here. And as I can see by the image artifact, I, we can do some extra, extra things to the image. Uh, we'll sharpen it a bit more up. Filters, sharpen, more sharpen. Always getting confused with this one and this one. Anyways, we'll do exactly what we've done here. It should double up. All right. Now you can clearly see what's going on there. Now because I had you in first uh, in the first place, you say this absolute rubbish here. Yeah? But once your eyes get used to this, you could make outlines a lot easier, a lot faster. Look at this. There's something here, like a circle. Uh, I can see a circular line going like this. And let's go back. I did not see this before, but now we do see. All right. Now this is absolute rubbish. Now what you do now is exactly what we did in the beginning. You see all kind of uh, things going on, all these crazy pixels and uh, things uh, that NASA has done to the image are starting to pop out a lot more. Now you just go back to filter, keep that layer selected, always keep an eye on your layers because even though I make that mistake as well, uh, every person that is using Adobe programs has, has had that problem many times. All right. I think it looks nice. All right, we're back. Now, what sense does it make to, to blur something, sharpen and blur back? Well, like I said, sharpen is, is some, a tool that will bring out the lines a bit more to the fore, foreground, and that's exactly what you want. But you want to keep it for your eyes easy as well. Now, I'm going to show you. We're going to make a comparison here, how it was in the beginning. Exactly. And that's what I'm talking about. All this area is, is, is completely exposed, the entire area. And that's basically it. That's what you do. Now you want to do the background as well. So we got a group here. We'll do that as a bonus. And we'll just show you how the dodge tool and the burn tool and the inversion works. So right, we got our nice group here. And what we want to do is right click on this group before we go any further. Duplicate group right click 
and merge group all right now we've merged all these effects all these images here i got this one on click so it will go automatically for this one and remember when you're working with layers the above layer is the master layer this layer it does not um, recognize this layer because it's be beneath this layer um, that's just how it works and i really like it it's just literally stacking effects on top of each other now all right we got this group copied now why did i do that because i want a mountain area all right we grab the mountain area with the selection tool here press ctrl c press ctrl v we'll just roll that way i know there are a lot different methods on on how to do this but that's just just the way how i work you'll see you get your own unique working way um, when you start doing anomalies that's uh, of course no problem that's a good thing it's uh it's it's a sign that you're starting to feel yourself comfortable in photoshop so you'd say what the hell are you doing well it's basically this i kind of let's roll like this so you see that this is the original layer and this is what we've made in essentially all right we go here we'll invert it and because it is a background it's it's really really tricky to do this in the background now i would like to have another blur here real time blur real blur now this doesn't matter the top here where it's really really blurry but it's all about this area here where we are trying to focus on uh, might do a free one here background is free i believe in nasa pictures and I'll definitely roll with free. Alright, we got this one again. Keep this one selected. We'll go once more into the uh, sharpen area here. Sharp, smart sharpen. And hit it. I'll duplicate another time here. We can hit it another time. Let's see. Now I've got it really set on, you know, easy, easy, relax relaxing sharpen it not too much and doing this step by step I like what I'm seeing here um, we could have done of course a lot better job but this is a tutorial I'm trying to keep it simple so we got the uh, don't need this layer anymore I will keep it for the for the sake of it now because you're in the inverted mode click on this layer click here and a burn tool we'll grab the burn tool because we're inverted um, white becomes black, black becomes white. Normally, the burn tool adds um, black around edges, uh, objects around pixels. I'm trying to keep it simple, but burn tool adds black in an image, and now it adds white. So we see. So when you have a dark spot there, you can change that and grab a better look at it. Really nice to do that. We got a sharpen tool here. We'll just start sharpening stuff up here. Just a tad, not too much, as you can see. And you can already see, like, shapes popping out. Now, those lines were already there before sharpening up, before uh, doing anything to the image. Now, backgrounds in, in uh, particular are really strange, very suspicious. If you've been uh, subscribed to my channel for a longer time, you know exactly what we're talking about. Now, all right. What shall I demonstrate next? Well, let's pop me in a uh, brightness and contrast here. As you can see, lowering brightness increases brightness here because in we're in inverted mode. And let's check out. Just a demonstration here. I really like what I'm seeing here, by the way. All right, and that's exactly what you want to see. When we go to the original one, you go here. The dodge tool is an important tool as well. And like I said before, it will make things lighter. Don't forget to select your layer, you've seen that. It always happens, no matter who you are, see? And it, those are the tools that you really need to uncover anomalies. You don't need anything. But don't get me wrong, it's a lot easier for the eyes and it's a lot easier to spot anomalies in there. So it's quite important. Well, not too bad of a result there. Eh? Okay. 
now let's check out <coughs> because we've kind of equalized the image now and it's a lot brighter on the, ba on the back and a lot brighter in the front it looks like that mountain or ridge thing or whatever you'd like to call it is a lot closer to the rover than you thought before optical illusion uh, make your own uh, thoughts about that um, hope you like the tutorial this is quite a head start on how to do things um, yeah let me know if you need to know anything this program here it's my favorite I'll demonstrate you quickly how I roll with this it's uh, I think that the result is a lot better it, it saves me a lot of time I just have a couple of sliders here really easy the result is extraordinary I think it's uh, worth the hundred fifty dollars uh, it has helped me a, a, a lot a lot and not just in the anomalies itself but it helps me uh, with, with different projects as well even though I'm mainly a programmer I still uh, use Photoshop or the other programs regularly mostly fire, fireworks and illustrator well I really like this I really like this program once you've worked with the smart shop and you're a bit used to Photoshop you understand how valuable this this tool is it helps me a lot now again you see <coughs> a crazy setting here but you know look at this triangle it just makes those shapes a lot more clear you want to file for find those lines and they go really easy on the image step by step yeah like you've seen here uh, you don't want to overdo things and I uh, hope you liked uh, like the video hope you've learned something let me know uh, in, in the comment section if you need anything else ask me anything you want and uh, I'll post a link to this uh, awesome, awesome plugin. Uh, that's a 30 day trial if you'd like to try it in your Photoshop, that's uh, possible. And if you want to buy it, it costs $150, I think. And uh, maybe you can buy, for example, the uh, output shop here uh, separately. I don't know if you can buy Sharpener Pro 3 separately. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you I've learned you something. Let me know if 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 I've inspired you inspired you to start doing this in Photoshop as well. Um, I've been showing uh, basic steps on how to achieve a better image image result uh, for as long as I can remember. And I haven't heard actually anyone trying to duplicate what I'm doing here. So um, let me know and uh, comments thumbs up subscribers always welcome uh, have, have a nice evening then have a nice day evening no matter where you're from and i wish you the best